Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So last week we programmed in our speech bubbles, which is something that Scratch can already do by itself. And now we need to figure out how we can make text appear in this box here. Now Scratch can do speech bubbles and it can do thought bubbles, but if we made these come up in speech bubbles and thought bubbles, it would look a bit wrong and it would be the wrong size. So what we are going to need to do is build our own text engine and create our own font which isn't actually as hard as it might seem. So in your project, let's click on paint a new sprite. Let's call this sprite text. And I'm gonna move this text sprite right here where you can see it. Zoom in and decide what you want your font to look like. First character we're going to make is the number one. So you could freehand draw this if you wanted, like something like this, or you could use the text tool here um, and decide what color and what font up here you want it to be. I'm going to use the pixel font because that's my favorite and I'm going to make the font white so it stands out nicely on the Undertale black background. This next part's very important. You need to name the costume one and then copy the costume. Let's duplicate this here and we need to double click here and change this into a two, and then we need to make sure it's centered. Now we need to keep going and do all the numbers all the way up to nine and make sure we also have a zero. Once you've done one all the way through to nine and also your zero, make sure that your zero costume is called zero, not 10. It's very important that all of your costumes are named exactly the character that they represent. Okay, so that's the numbers all done. Let's move on to the letters. So the first one we're going to make is A. I'm going to rename the costume up here. Now I'm going to use a lowercase a, a little a, not a capital A. And I'm also going to make this red so it's easier for you to see. Now this will be case sensitive. So we are going to need a costume for all capital letters and all lowercase letters. So I'm gonna duplicate this and we're going to need to name this a capital A, and we need to change this so that it's a capital A. Again, always make sure it's nicely centered. Okay, well, I'm done putting in my letters. Um, I've done it all in alphabetical order, so it's easy to see if I miss one. So make sure that you're patient, make sure that everything's named correctly, and go all the way to the bottom, and you should have 62 costumes. If you don't have 62 costumes, something's gone wrong. So go back, check all your costumes, make sure you're not missing any, because if you are missing any, then the next bit of code will skip the letters that you've missed. So we've got all the numbers and we've got all the letters. Are we missing anything? Yes, we are missing punctuation. So let's start off with a nice exclamation mark. Let's duplicate. Let's change this Z into an exclamation mark and make sure it's centered, make sure that we rename the costume, and let's make a question mark. Now start thinking about what other kind of punctuation you're going to need. We probably need a comma and a full stop, so let's add those in. When you're making these punctuation marks, remember that some things like a comma, for example, will go below the center, and something else like speech marks will go above the center. Now, if you're using the text tool like I am, you can just center it as normal, just like this. If you're free drawing it um, using a tool something like this, then what you probably need to do is manually move this so it's a little bit above the center. Now, if later on in your project you find that there's more punctuation you want to add, that's completely fine. You can just come back and add that costume in when you realize that you need it. But there are two more bits of punctuation that we absolutely have to make sure that we do not forget. One of them is the star. Now that might seem a little unusual, but Undertale uses stars at the beginning of a lot of lines of text. And so it's good for you to be able to have that option if you want to do the same in your project. Now, the other thing that we need to make sure that we do is we need to make sure we have a space. So duplicate and delete entirely your bit of text and this costume just needs to be called space. Now, one last time, just make absolute certain that all of your punctuation is named correctly in its costume name. 
If you run into problems later on the track, if things aren't coming up the way you expect it to with the text, then come back and check the costume names because it's very easy to forget to update those as you're making new costumes. Okay, well I've changed everything back to white and I think I've got all the punctuation I need for now, so let's head to the code. Now we're going to do something similar here to what we did with our damage display code and also the speech bubble code that comes out of our enemy. So we're going to go to my blocks, we're going to click on make a block, we're going to call this write. Click on add an input and call this input text, then press OK. Let's zoom in so you guys can see this a bit better. Now we need a new variable. So we're going to make a variable called text counter and click for this sprite only. Now this text counter variable is going to behave very similarly to the text counter variable that we made inside our enemy code. So we need to set it to zero at the beginning. Set text counter to zero. And then we need to repeat and we're going to get out length of text and we need to change our text counter each time we print out a new letter and then we need to switch costume to letter text counter of text. Now we need to actually make the clone and also we should move the letters along. So let's get out change x by 15. So let's do a test, shall we? Now when I click on this, we should have excellent. We've got it all typed out there. Now the gap between the letters I think is a bit too narrow. So I'm going to make the gap a bit wider. So you can change the gap to whatever you think makes sense. I'm going to change this to 16 pixels. If your text is too large, you can also shrink it down by just getting out a set size and experimenting with a few different sizes here. I'm quite happy with the big chunky letters, so I'm going to be leaving it at 100%. And of course, we also need to make sure that this text is going to the right place before it starts creating itself, which is sort of in the corner of this box here. So get out a go to x, y. Now I quite like minus 160 for the x and about 10 for the y, but you feel free to change those numbers uh, have a bit of an experiment, see what works for the dimensions of your box. Okay, let's have another look at this test. Let's hit stop to get rid of all those clones and then click here. Oh, that's actually a bit too high, isn't it? Let's try changing this Y to minus 10 and we'll try that again. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now you've probably already noticed we always have this additional three on the end here, and that's because that's the original sprite that made all the clones. We need to make sure that that is hidden, but the clones are not. So we've done this before. We need to get out a when green flag clicked hide. And then we need a when I start as clone show. Now the way that we've done this is if we have a very, very long message, it won't actually move on to the next line. So if I just click here, you'll notice all the letters on the end just go out of the box and then just sit on top of each other at the very edge of the screen. So we need a way of moving the text down. And there are a lot of very complicated ways we could do this, but a nice easy way is just to have another input that says what line we want to be writing on. So right click on define write and edit and let's click on text add a label. Let's call this line, add an input that we also call line, press okay. 
Now we need a way for our line input to affect our y coordinate and when we're writing lots of text we don't want to have to try and remember what y coordinate works for different lines so let's figure out the different y coordinates of our different lines how many lines we want and get all that maths sorted so that in the future when we're writing we can just write it like this line 1, line 2, line 3 and we'll know how it looks. Now if we figure out the gap that we want between our lines, we can actually use these numbers, multiply that by our gap number, and then move our y coordinate down by that much, and it should all work out. So let's get out a multiplied by operator, and get out a line input, and put it in there like that. Now our gap, we can start off with let's say 30, and we can always change our gap later. Now we need to use a minus operator, a subtraction operator, because we are moving the y coordinate down. Put that inside our starting point. Now our y starting point was minus 10. Now we're probably going to need to change this as you're about to see. But let's take this multiplied by operator, put it into there. And now let's hit stop to get rid of all those clones and click this. As you can see, this is too low now, and that makes sense actually if you think about it, because even on line one, we are still subtracting 30 from our y starting point. So what we need to do is add 30 to our y starting point, and that should balance things out. So minus 10 plus 30 is 20. And let's see what that looks like now. Okay, that's a lot better. Now, at this point, you might want to change the line spacing if you want. Um, so I'm going to try 33 as the spacing between my lines. And I quite like that. And I could even move the starting point just a little bit higher. And we'll see what that looks like. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I might do a bit more tweaking, and I recommend you do some tweaking as well. Now, the way we've set this up, you don't have to stick to just the three lines. We could make a line four right now if we wanted. The only issue with my project would be that it would go outside of the box. So if you want to have more than three lines, all you need to do is change the starting position of your Y, move it maybe a little bit higher, maybe set the size of your text a bit smaller. Once your text is a bit smaller, you might need to change the X gap. And of course, you'll need to change the line gap, make this a smaller number. Have a bit of a play with those numbers until you have text of a size that suits your font and suits your game and that you're happy with. Now, next week, I'm gonna show you how to actually implement this text into various things like act and mercy. But there is one more thing we should do in preparation for next week, and that is we need a way to make sure that we delete all of the text we've just made. Otherwise, it will just keep layering on top of each other and create a bunch of clones that we can't get rid of. This is nice and simple. All we need to do is go to events, get out when I receive broadcast, and we're going to make a new broadcast click on new message. We're going to call this erase text, then press OK. And underneath that, we need to make sure that we have a delete this clone. So that's everything for this week. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss next week. And let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you need any help with your project. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.